this probably comes to mind. But did you know that this film series was said to be inspired by the real deal? But in real life, these agents are probably not the sharply dressed, alien weapon wielding, world saving two quarters you see in the movies. Although I, I guess they could be because, well, no one really knows much about them. But according to many accounts since the 1950s, the Men in Black or MIB, also known as the Silencers, are mysterious agents who usually travel in groups of one to three and often wear sunglasses, have olive complexions. Not only that, they speak in strange ways, some of which include monotone, mechanical, strange accents, slurs, and unevenness. Sometimes they will even wear wigs, makeup, and prosthetics in an attempt to hide their true appearances. There have been many reported cases of their eyes, which supposedly glow a sinister light, which is probably why they're wearing the sunglasses in the first place. And because they have such strange unnatural appearances and weird behaviors, they are believed by many to be alien-human hybrids or some sort of intelligent robots. According to many eyewitness accounts, the MIB usually only targets two groups of people, people who claim to have seen a UFO and the people who are very interested in UFOs and conduct research on them. The typical meeting with the MIB were said to go something like this. A man would see an UFO, snap a picture of it, but just as he's about to enter his house and call his best friend about the sighting, he sees a group of strange men waiting for him outside. They approach him and take out their badges, telling him that they are members of a certain secret government organization. After that, they'll ask him about what he saw, even though he hasn't said a single word about the sighting to anyone yet. Then they'll threaten him to stay quiet about the sighting and proceed to confiscate everything that he has related to UFOs. So maybe none of this more efficient approach. Not only that, but people who say they were visited by the MIB often speak of their supposed telepathic powers where they know when they're being lied to. Supposedly, they are so knowledgeable about a witness that they are able to recall memories only the witness would have known. Now, the good thing is, if there is a good thing out of this situation, is that the MIB aren't really violent at all. They do threaten people and tell them that something bad will happen if they don't listen, but most of the time, physical violence is not involved in the whole ordeal. Now, let's say the men in black are real. Let's say they do exist. Then the questions are, what are they? Who do they work for? Why are these dark student men trying to cover up the existence of aliens and UFOs? Well, many believe that the MIB are government agents who are under orders to suppress public knowledge about the existence of extraterrestrials. There have also been many men dressed in black recorded in history that are related to encounters with the devil or his subjects. So some people even believe that the men in black are manipulating religious myths in order to scare people who claim to have seen UFOs. Others, however, believe that the men in black are robots who operate on AI and are somehow programmed to silence witnesses, which may explain why they sound so monotone and ask such strange questions. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we know very little about the Men in Black and whether they even exist, but there have been many, many personal accounts of encounters with the Men in Black from the 1950s to now, and here are just a few of them. The first public appearance of the Men in Black was said to have happened in 1947 at Murray Island, where a man named Harold Dow was on his boat in the Puget Sound when suddenly six saucer-like objects appeared in the sky. One of the flying objects broke apart and some of the debris landed on the boat, killing Dow's dog and in during his son. After the debris landed, strange men in black suits appeared and brought the debris onto an aircraft. Dahl took photos of the debris because he wanted evidence of what he saw, but after he went home, he found that his film suffered radiation damage and the pictures were not able to be developed. Dahl then claimed that he was even approached by the men in black who told him not to tell anyone about the incident. Of course, he did not follow their instructions and the story grew so much that it was eventually featured in the Gray Barker book, They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucers. Although Dahl's story spoke of men dressed in black, the concept of men in black was not developed on tell a really interesting case in 1953. In this case, a man named Albert K. Bender ran a small organization called the International Flying Saucer Barrel, or IFSB, and edited a small publication called the Space Review that was dedicated to UFOs. Although Space Review had a small following, all of his viewers strongly believed in the existence of such saucers and thought that the rest of the world was really living in ignorance. But one day, just as the October 1953 Space Review issue was about to be released, the readers were shocked to find two very strange announcements. The first announcement, in summary, said that a reliable source claimed that the UFO mystery or solution was coming to its final stages, but is not allowed to be published. The second and even more surprising announcement said that the source of UFOs has been found, but a higher source has stopped the publication of any information related to it. The announcement ended with the following statement. We advise those engaged in saucer work to please be very cautious. After the two announcements, Bender then suspended the publication of Space Review and ended IFSB. After both the magazine and the organization were shut 
shut down. Bender said in an interview that he was visited by three men wearing dark suits, and the men told him to stop with his UFO research. The men scared Bender so much that he ended his project as soon as possible and feared that his life was at risk. After that, all questions asked to him by friends or colleagues were replied with cryptic answers or not at all. Now, the state of affairs at the time created confusion among UFO enthusiasts because some claimed that Bender told a fake story in order to save face because his organization and publication were already losing too much money. But regardless of whether Bender faked the story or not, the story went viral and sparked public interest in the supposed mysterious government agency, and soon stories of encounters with the MIB were popping up everywhere. Another notable encounter happened in 1976. Dr. Herbert Hopkins, a well-respected family physician and UFO enthusiast from Old Orchard Beach, Maine, was home one day when his phone rang, and somebody on the other end of the line told him that he was calling from a UFO organization and asked if he had time to talk about his research. According to a report from NBC Radio, Hopkins said yes, and merely seconds later, the same man who was on the phone was at his doorstep. And according to Hopkins, if he was even as close as across the street or next door telephoning, he could not have possibly gotten here as soon as I did to turn on the light for him. Hopkins said that the man who appeared had a black suit, was bald with no eyebrows, wore eyelashes, and had a smooth, dead white plastic skin and ruby red lips. So basically Voldemort in a suit? Anyway, Hopkins said, then I could see that his mouth was a perfectly straight slit. Apparently, he did not have what we call lips. His mouth was more like a ventriloquist's dummy. The strange man then told Hopkins to take out a coin from his pocket and hold it in the palm of his hand. According to Hopkins, the man said, watch the coin, and it started to develop a silver color instead of copper, and then the silver became bluish, and the painting was getting quite fuzzy, out of focus, blurred, and then it simply was gone. It slowly dematerialized. Now, this coin trick was not for any entertainment purposes, but more of a threat, and afterwards, the man ordered Hopkins to destroy all his UFO research, or else he'd be in danger. Hopkins, who was terrified after the encounter, obliged. And finally, a more recent report of an encounter with the men in black involves someone I and probably a lot of you love, Dan Aykroyd. In January of 2002, Aykroyd sold a TV series to the Sci-Fi Channel called Out There, which he talks about UFOs, crop circles, aliens, all that. While taking a break during one of his interviews, Aykroyd went outside and saw a black Ford sedan with a man in black standing next to it. He looked away for a second, and when he looked back, the car and the man were both gone. Two hours after they vanished, Aykroyd suddenly received the bad news that the producers were told not to continue taping and that the show was canceled and none of the episodes would ever air. So there you go guys, I had a lot of requests to do a video about the Men in Black, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Now personally, do I believe there's a secret government organization out there tracking UFOs, tracking extraterrestrials? Yeah, I think so. I just don't know if they are as strange as some of these encounters make them out to be. I don't know if they all wear matching black suits where there was just some crazy sale going on at Macy's at some point. But let me know what you guys think. Do you believe the Men in Black organization agency does indeed exist? And if so, do you believe that these agents are actually human? Also, I just want to say the topic of Men in Black is included in the second issue of the Beyond Science magazine. So if you want to check that out, click the link right here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later. Hey guys, it's Mikey Chan. When we talk about the men in black, this probably comes to mind. But did you know that this film series was said to be inspired by the real deal? But in real life, these agents are probably not the sharply dressed, alien weapon wielding, world saving two quarters you see in the movies. Although I, I guess they could be because, well, no one really knows much about them. But according to many accounts since the 1950s, the men in black or MIB, also known as the silencers, are mysterious agents who usually travel in groups of one to three and often wear some glasses, have olive complexions. Not only that, they speak in strange ways, some of which include monotone, mechanical, strange accents, slurs, and unevenness. Sometimes they will even wear wigs, makeup, and prosthetics in an attempt to hide their true appearances. There have been many reported cases of their eyes, which supposedly glow a sinister light, which is probably why they're wearing the sunglasses in the first place. And because they have such strange unnatural appearances and weird behaviors, they are believed by many to be alien-human hybrids or some sort of intelligent robots. According to many eyewitness accounts, the MIB usually only targets two groups of people, people who claim to have seen